Welcome to our video on the graphing the tangent function, which we have in this picture right here from um, GCALC, G C A L C, great free plugin. Um, great free, maybe, I think it's called a plugin at least. Uh, so it's free and it's great for graphing. So here we have the tangent in purple, and here it is again, and here it is, and, and so forth. And the blue line we have, well, what's that? Well, I can look at zero for my answer. At zero, the cosine is one, so this blue line is cosine, and this green line is zero, since we know that sine is zero at zero. Um, so what's going on here with the tangent? Why does it just veer off into infinity here so often, and what's happening? Well, we said before that so, uh, sine tangent is a ratio of sine to cosine. So we're going to take a snapshot of this chunk right here and kind of examine what it means to really take a ratio of sine to cosine. And that, I think that will give us a better understanding of why the tangent graph looks like this and why it actually makes a lot of sense about what's happening. So let's take a picture of that and we'll open a new window. Let's see if I can do one. Okay. And I hope this fits. Let's see. That looks pretty good. And I think I'll put it kind of right here. Anyway, so that is a, a picture of well, the tangent and the sine and the cosine. So let me write that in here. And I think we'll able to see this. This line right here, and let me just reemphasize this with, pur with um, purple. We can use a broader stroke. This right here is our tangent line. And that's, that's how it's going to look. And, and you might notice that it, it seems to veer off into infinity uh, at this point over here and over here. And that actually makes a lot of sense. And the reason is tangent of theta equals, we've talked about how it equals the opposite side over the adjacent side of a right triangle. But I'm going to just, I guess, digress, go back a little bit, talk about what, really, what this really means. Um, here's my right triangle. Here's theta. Now, tangent is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent, but, but also um, sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, right? Sine is theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, and if you can see that, and then we write a different color, and then cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what am I getting at here? Well, what happens if you take sine of theta, and this is a pretty important, it's called trig identity, divided by cosine of theta. What does that mean? Well, that means the opposite over the hypotenuse, that equals a sine, divided by the adjacent adjacent over hypotenuse. Now when we divide like this, you can think of it as the opposite over the hypotenuse times the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And the hypotenuses cancel out, and what we're left with is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta equals opposite over adjacent, and the tangent of theta equals the opposite over adjacent, that means, right, that the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta must also equal the tangent of theta. And that's, that's the identity we're going to look at right here, that the tangent of theta is a ratio. Um, since cosine sine divided by cosine equals the same thing as tangent. Tangent must equal sine divided by cosine. So we're going to use that. That's our ratio that we're looking at. Tangent of theta equals the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And that actually is, I mean, maybe it doesn't seem very interesting, but at least some interesting results. And that's why the graph kind of veers off into infinity up here and down here. Why into this undefined infinity? Well, let's look at the sine and cosine. What's happening here? Well, here is my sine function. I'm going to highlight that in green since it's already written in green. There it is. Well, what happens? As sine is increasing, what is cosine doing? Well, first it's increasing with it. All right, and and then it's going to decrease. So this means a couple of things. Well, eventually I should extend this. Sine will be up here, and cosine will reach zero at some point over here. What does that mean? Well, that means the tangent is definitely undefined every time this happens. And since 
the sine and cosine are in a cycle, t the tangent is undefined repeatedly. So what's going to happen is you have, I'm using pink again, I can't really see that. Um, when you have something divided by zero, there is no way to define that. We call it undefined, and that's just happening to tangent. So every time, every time the sine of theta is going to reach one, right, cosine of theta is going to reach zero. And every time that happens, um, our, our function is undefined. So when sine of theta equals one, cosine of theta is going to equal zero. So what, when does this happen? It happens a lot. So if cosine of theta and sine of theta is a ratio, well, if this down here is equal to zero, and this is equal to any number, right? Any number, then any number divided by zero is undefined. So, so there are breaks in the tangent graph. There are moments when we don't know what to put as an answer because there is no answer. At other points, what's happening? Well, here, this is a good point to look at, zero. This makes sense that the tangent is zero here because sine, our blue line divided by green, well, one, excuse me, our green line, that's sine, divided by our blue line. At this point, sine is equal to zero. So at theta equals zero, sine is so sine of theta equals zero. And the cosine is going to equal something else. It's not going to equal zero. But, any, but zero divided by any number, what's that? That's zero. So the tangent at this point is zero. And then what happens to our purple line? Well, it starts to go up. I need purple. There it goes. So here, the tangent starts to go up. It's going up and up. Why? Well, we're constantly dividing um, our green line by our blue line. So, so the value of the purple the tangent is going to be going up because sine is increasing and cosine is decreasing. If you think about what, what that means is, well, if the sine is our numerator and our cosine is our denominator, that's what tangent is. So as this number gets larger and this number gets smaller, our value gets bigger. As an example, if you have 1 half, 1 divided by 2, it's small, right? But as I increase this and decrease that, what's going to happen to my number? Well, next, if I had 2 over 1, I increase the top. Now I have a number 2, and that's definitely bigger than a half. And next, I could have 3 over a half, and that's equal to 6, right? So as I increase these numbers and decrease these numbers, the value gets larger. So tangent's going to be growing here. And then eventually it recycles because at some point it's going to be undefined. Right, it's going to happen again where it's undefined over here. So it's undefined over here. Sorry about that break. I had to just reset something. So the tangent line is undefined at this point because, again, we're always dividing by cosine. We're always dividing by the blue line. So whenever the blue line crosses zero, we're dividing by zero for tangent, and that's undefined. So you'll see that over and over again. It got cut off right here, but over here you see the blue line starts to cross zero. So at this point, you have a negative sine value divided by zero, but that's still undefined because anything divided by zero is undefined. So that, I mean, we, we have this area over here where we're increasing. What about over here, right? Why is the tangent decreasing? Well, it is decreasing in value, but, but you might want to think of that as also increasing in a way, increasing its distance from the origin, just as it is here as well. Um, it's getting further and further down um, from the or origin. And the reason why, uh, if you think about the relationship between sine and cosine, look at all these sine values, right? They're all below zero, so these are all negative. And the cosines are all positive values. Over here, we had the reverse. We had all positive values for um, for sine and cosine, sorry, and all positive values for sine. Let me put that green in there. That's an, I mean, all these positive divided by positive. We have these positive values, and the blue line, the cosines decreasing, and the sines increasing. So those values, those numbers are going up and up and up for tangent. It's that ratio. Here, the ratio is a negative ratio. So tangent's going to curve down. These negative divided by these positives are going to um, get are, give us smaller and smaller numbers. And part of the reason, if you want to think about it this way, um, the the sign is getting more and more negative, getting larger negative numbers divided by smaller and smaller positive numbers. So when you have bigger negatives, then the negatives are increasing, and you're dividing by smaller and smaller positives you're going to get a much bigger number. For example, 
if you have negative 4 divided by um, 2. It's going to be negative 2. But what if I had, if I increase negative 4, increase not in value, I'm sorry, but in absolute value, if I had negative um, 8 divided by positive 1 half, well, that's going to be negative 16, which is way less than negative 2. And that's kind of what's happening here on the tangent. And if you want to see it in the graph, again, these tangent lines, right, they're bound at these by these asymptotes over here. They're not drawn in. But they're basically these points that the, the graph can get really, really close to, but never act the function, excuse me, can get really, really close to, but never reach. Because every time this blue line crosses a zero, you're dividing by zero. So this is an undefined location for tangent. We go along here on the cosine, and then here we reach zero. So this is an undefined area for the tangent. We go along, and again, we cross zero. So we're dividing by zero because tangent is that ratio of green sine divided by blue cosine. And again, we have an undefined location. So it's really neat that the tangent does this funky thing because we keep, re we keep reaching undefined points. It's this really neat looking, un this really neat looking um, broken up graph. And uh, it's, it's hard to believe, I guess, from this picture that all these functions are actually connected. But we still see patterns, right? The blue and the green functions the cosine and sine, are just shifted over. And the tangent is just broken apart by these points of impossibility. And that's some pretty neat stuff.